Hello and welcome to 5 to Watch here on the Football 365 show. This show is brought to you by Football Index, where you bet on the football stock market by buying shares in the world's top players. 18 plus, begambleaware.org. I'm Mark Smith, I'm here with Pete Farries. Every week in this brand new show we'll be looking at five players we think are worth keeping an eye out on. Um, then really sort of giving you an idea of what to do with them based on a football index point of view. Uh, lots to talk about this week, so I think we'll get straight into it. Uh, but as ever, if you enjoy the show, don't forget to like and subscribe and press the notification bell so you never miss a show going forward. This is 5 to Watch, brought to you by Football Index. Right, Pete, a ridiculous game of football at Old Trafford this weekend. United 6, Leeds United 2. Um, I mean, whenever we see United play attacking football, there's always one player at the heart of it, and that player is Bruno Fernandes. We've talked about him for months, how important he is. But uh, from your point of view, what do you make of him so far this season, and particularly in that Leeds United game? Well, that he's an incredibly rare thing, isn't he, Mark? He's a Manchester United signing that made sense and worked. <laughs> so there you go, straight off the bat, it's, it's, it's pure success. Yeah, the fact is he's playing absolutely sensationally. His vision, his understanding of the game, everyone around him has almost immediately begun to respect him. You know, every player around him has gone, get it to Bruno, get it to Bruno. Yeah. They've been... So, so good at doing that. And Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, for all of his faults, has been very good at nurturing that in Fernandes as well. I mean, we're now talking after that crazy Leeds game of 20 goal contributions this season. That's assists and goals in 20 games. So yeah. that ratio, I mean, again, I'm a bit of a football expert, but also not a bit of a football expert. That's quite a good ratio at this stage of the season. Even to me. absolutely incredible. Even to me, a layman, even I can see that's that's a high number, and that's 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 pretty impressive. Um, I think with Bruno, it's that thing of, like you say, about it's a player that seems to have just suited this club. Um, so, what does that mean then, Pete, for Bruno Fernandez from a football index point of view? Well, dividends is what it means to Bruno Fernandez right now. It's it's unbelievable the dividends he's getting you, whether it be in play, which are obviously those 30, first 30 days of owning a player, or your, your match day um, dividends as well. Whatever that payout is right now, you're getting it with Bruno Fernandez, And of course, that will eventually stop because that's how football works. That's how life works. But right now, he's playing absolutely unbelievably. He's getting you those dividend payouts. So right now, Bruno Fernandez, an absolute unquestionable purchase. It's just a no-brainer, right? It's just he, He's always on... Yeah, Either the score number. sheet or the assist sheet or whatever it is. And, and then his actual price is going to keep going up as well if he keeps doing that. So it, it yeah. just makes perfect sense with Fernandez at the moment. Great. OK, I want to talk about Liverpool against Crystal Palace. I mean, on paper, you look at this 7-0 <laughs> away win in the Premier League. <laughs> it's pretty impressive. But the player I want to talk about here, it's not Mo Salah, it's not Firmino, it's not Mane, it's not even Minamino. I'm going to go for uh, Liverpool left-back Andy Robertson. Uh, another clean sheet, another assist, and a player that seems to be able to tick all the boxes of what you want a modern fullback to be. And I really like him. Mm. I just like him. There's some players you don't take to, there's some players you do. And, and Andy Robertson's somebody I do take to. He's part of this whole thing that Klopp has nurtured. You can actually see bits of what Klopp wants in, in Andrew Robertson. You know, the fact that he's, he's full of desire, he's full of commitment, he's very, very good at football. Sadly for Scotland, both of their best players are left backs, so that's annoying for them. But for Liverpool, it's incredible. And the fact is, you keep coming back to looking at how Robertson's playing. It's absolutely incredible. He's part of this defence that was leaky. Then wasn't just leaky, was all in hospital. They all come back out again, or are starting to come back out again, some of them. And the defence looks as strong now. He is an incredible talent. The personality is brilliant. You can see how he works in what Klopp has built. And Robertson's somebody that... I mean, he's, one of, he's one of my top three players in the Premier League in terms of just my favourite players, I think. Oh, really? You like him that much? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you I do. Want I really for, you like want to go for a pint with him? I think I like as well. Like when he went, I, I, that's what, I want to go for a pint with anyone at this stage, Mark. But the <laughs> what I really like about him is that <laughs> what I really like about him as well is that he struggled when he first went to Liverpool. He really struggled, and everyone was going, "Ah, oh, this kid, he's rubbish." And what he's done since then, what Klopp's done with him, what he's done is brilliant. So I've got a huge amount of respect for that as well. Yeah, Liverpool have sort of done that, haven't they? they they've brought in players that may have a bit of a chip on their shoulder. They've come from either lower league football or where they weren't necessarily rated that highly. You look at Mo Salah, for example, from Chelsea and then Roma, or you know Andy Robertson from the Championship. They've brought players that have this real spirit and determination. Um, and yeah, I think that, that, that works into the way he wants his players to play. Robertson's got West Brom at home, followed by Newcastle away with Liverpool next. Uh, talk me through what that means for a football index point of view. 
Well, as you say, you should always keep an eye out. When you're buying a play, you should always keep an eye out on the fixture list. Have they got tough ones coming up? Have they got easy ones coming up? I mean, if you're Liverpool, most weeks you're going to have easy ones coming up. And the fact is that he's getting the assist. You've already mentioned it uh, in this uh, in this chat already. He's looking very good. Liverpool's defence is, I think, only going to keep getting stronger now because as players start to come back into that squad, people are going to be fresher towards the end of the season. I think they're going to start keeping more and more and more clean sheets. West Brom and Newcastle, I think, are definitely games where they keep clean sheets. I think there for Andy Robertson, with the assist possibility thrown in as well, is a very, very good idea indeed. Right, Pete, let's talk about John Stones. He's a player who has taken a fair bit of criticism over the last few years. Uh, someone who was, at one point, England and Everton, main golden boy, then moved on to Man City for a big fee, and it didn't quite work out. But now he's back in, he's playing regularly, he's a ball-playing centre-half, very, very sexy position, if you like. And, you know, for the sake of England going forward as well, it's great to see him back, isn't it? It really is. I mean, it, the fact is, I know that England weren't phenomenal at World Cup in terms of how they played, but we played for set pieces, we got set pieces, him and Harry Maguire scored from them and also defended them very well on the whole. He's a player who is clearly very talented, was brilliant at every club he was at up until Man City, then brilliant at Man City, and then obviously I think personal problems started to creep in, a lack of confidence started to creep in, Pep Guardiola couldn't pull the parachute for him and all of a sudden John Stone disappears. You get rumours of him moving to Arsenal for almost nothing this January. I mean, don't forget, back in sort of September, John Stones was still considered to be rubbish. It's this incredible increase, this incredible explosion in performance from John Stones that is sort of driving this. Eight clean sheets in 10 games that he started for Man City, so that's a huge thing. A 93% yeah. pass completion rate, which is absolutely unbelievable. And then you throw in the fact as well that as of yet, in those 10 games, he's not made a mistake that has directly led to an opponent having a chance. So if you're a defender, you're keeping all those clean sheets and you're not messing up. And Man City, who are a bit of a strange team at the moment this season, are still benefiting from that. That is a huge thing again and again. If John Stones can come back with all the private life stuff sorted, as we think it is, or at least it's calmed down, then that's very, very good for Man City. And it could be very, very good for England, I think. Absolutely. And also, this is the this is the main thing for me. He's keeping Laporte out the side. And, and Laporte, certainly to my mind, was in the top two or three centre-backs in the league last season. So if he's doing that, that is a huge tick. We all assumed Diaz had come in to, to go alongside Laporte. But actually, John Stones has said, no, this is my shirt. And you're not taking it off me. Uh, what does this mean for John Stones from a football index point of view? Well, firstly, he's still actually in the scheme of football index quite cheap. And I know things can change and you can, and sadly you can lose money in this, this kind of bet. But it's a really, really good buy, I think. Because I've just said to you, eight clean sheets in mm. ten games. So you're in play dividends are getting paid out over and over again. I think media coverage of him is going to increase. Is it going to increase enough to get you a big media dividend? I don't know. I'm not sure on that. But he is going to get more and more attention. And the fact is that he's playing well in a Man City side that are playing well. So you're keeping clean sheets. Yeah. That's going in your favour. We know he can score, by the way, from um, from corners, from set pieces, as I mentioned with England. So it might not be paying out right now, but you might get the occasional little lovely goal boost as, as well. So I, th I think right now John Stones is, is one of the better buys uh, on their football index. I think so. And he's got Newcastle at home, followed by Everton away. Uh, so... Every opportunity there for another clean sheet in Newcastle and then back to his old club to score a couple of headers. Right, I want to talk now, Pete, about someone who I think you might not agree with me on. Um, Aubameyang at Arsenal. Uh, OK, look, we both agree, surely, that this is a wonderful world-class talent. Someone who's done it at the top divisions for the last five or six seasons of his career. Been brilliant in the Premier League while he's been here. Only a few months ago he won the FA Cup with Arsenal and Arteta. Something's happened at that club, hasn't it? Something's happened. He is not getting the same service. He's not getting into the game as much as he used to. That trademark smile we used to see, I don't think I've seen it for about six weeks. It just feels like the weight of the world is on Aubameyang's shoulders. Uh, I think he's at a point where it can only get better from here on in. And I trust him as a footballer to pull it out at some point and start performing like we used to. Uh, Pete, what do you think of that? I think everything you've said there is completely right. I just, from a, from a different from football index, I suppose, point of view, don't think that right now I'd be buying Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. But the fact of the matter is that Arsenal... It's interesting. I saw a tweet at the weekend saying it puts into perspective what Arsene Wenger was managing to do with Arsenal, doesn't it? Because clearly there's been problems behind the scenes for years and years and years and years and years. Yeah. And now those, those are beginning to come to a fruition. You brought in one of the best managers in Europe, which Unai Emery is one of the best managers in Europe. There's no discussion about that. 
Um, he couldn't do it. You then try Arteta, you get a little early sort of Arteta bump, you end up winning the FA Cup. It all looks like it might start to be uh, sorting itself out. And then you get to Christmas and Arsenal fans are worried about relegation. <laughs> so there is clearly something inherently wrong at Arsenal. At its core, at its absolute core, there is something inherently wrong at Arsenal. Yes. Now with Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, is that his fault? Absolutely not. Is that, is that the fault of a number of players there? No. Even someone like Granit Xhaka, who does absolutely insane things sometimes, I'm not entirely sure I'd lay a huge amount of blame at his feet, although on occasion he's insane. But the fact of the matter is that you don't, I think, blame Aubameyang for this. But how can you then support Aubameyang in other ways, in, sorry, in, in a football index bet, if you don't think Arsenal are going to get better and get better quickly? OK. I mean, I've got to pull you up there on your pronunciation of Aubameyang. You might well be right on this, Pete, but I'm going with yeah. Obama Yang. You go with Albion Young, but however you say it. Let's call the whole thing off. It's, uh, it's Pierre Emerick Albion, is how you actually meant to say it. However, I appreciate that the the the, um, the nomenclature generally is Albion Yang, and I'm just a big snob about this kind of thing, and possibly an incorrect snob as well. <laughs> yeah, I think we can agree on that. Right, well, let's move on to our final player of this week's five to watch. I want to talk about a Spurs player. Now, it's been a tough week for Spurs. They drew at Palace. They lost. Uh, at Liverpool, and they lost again at home to Leicester. Uh, but for uh, Hyun Min Son, good week for him, really. He won the Puskas Award for Best Goal of the Year, um, and I think it's just, it's just, it's nice to see him get some accolades because I feel like for the last couple of years he's been outstanding and hasn't he hasn't won anything, you know, as a player. And I think it's it's right that a player of his quality gets this gets this award. I love it. I love him. I love the way he plays. I love everything about him. I love his partnership with Harry Kane. It feels to me like an old school, big man, little man strike partnership. And I am more than prepared to watch that twice a week for the rest of my life. <laughs> yeah, and, and I am as well, because I love that partnership. Those two, Kane and Son, clearly really love each other and clearly really rate each other and just need each other as well it's a sort of a lovely partnership to see again in the Premier yeah. League because that I know at Liverpool you've got those things as well again but it felt like that kind of dynamic had died out of Premier League football for a little while so to see it coming back over the last couple of years at a number of clubs it is really really nice it's for Spurs I think they'll be absolutely fine they've had a bit of a wobble we know what Leicester can be like Leicester can be absolutely ruthless on the road they can just murder you for absolutely. Out of absolutely nowhere so I'm not too worried about the Leicester result the Palace one wasn't a, a great result if we're being honest um, the Pushkas Award for Hyung Min Son, yeah, it's a it's a big, big award. You know, people don't realise quite how big it is. It goes across the men's and the women's game. And as much as that is a phenomenal run from Hyung Min Son, I'd like to have a quick word about the defending at some point if we can, because the defending is just a group of grown men going, and then Hyung Min Son smashing it. So that's I'd have to have a quick word about defending, but it's an amazing run. I mean, it's an absolutely incredible run from Hyung Min Son. It really is. Um, and and again, yeah, he's a great player. Plenty of goals this season. You know, plenty of assists. He's a key part of what yeah. makes Harry Kane tick. If we're being perfectly honest. Well, I, I'm, if I'm being brutally frank with you here, Pete, I don't actually think it should have won the Puskas Award. But I'm pleased that he is a person who won it because I love him as a player and as a bloke. He seems like a good guy. Let's not get into why I don't think it should win the Puskas yeah, Award. The show's not long enough. Uh, from, from a uh, football index point of view, though, <laughs> where does this leave Son? Has that Puskas Award had any effect on his standing there? It doesn't seem so massively, but but with Son, what interests me is he doesn't get as many goals and assists as Harry Kane. He, he doesn't quite get there. But what Hyung Min Son does do is get loads of goals and loads of assists, and yeah. he's nowhere near the price of Harry Kane. It's still so, a big number, isn't it? Even if it's not as much as Harry Kane. Exactly. So again, your dividends are paying out very nicely on Hyung Min Son. And if you're if you're sitting there thinking, I want to buy a player, or I want to take a risk on a player, you know, it can go one way, it can go the other. And you're looking at Kane, and you're looking at Hyung Min Son, and the price difference is so massive that I thought, well, you might as well look at Hyung Min Son then, because he's still scoring goals, he's still getting your in-play dividends, his price is still going to grow when he does well, which he will. So you put all that yeah. together, and I think, I'm not saying don't buy Harry Kane, because obviously it's Harry Kane, why wouldn't you? But if you're sitting there thinking about, I need a choice between these two, actually right now the better value might well be Hyung Min Son. Excellent. Lovely stuff. Good job, Pete. Right, that's all we've got time for this week. This has been 5 to Watch. Brought to you by Football Index here on the Football 365 Show. If you want to get in touch with the show, you can email us. It's the editor at football365.com. We'll be back same time next week. Until then, from me and Pete Ferries, goodbye. Football 365.